Okay, so we're almost done or we're almost at the point where I'm, I'm gonna kind of get off uh, and, and, and let you finish. Um, because, you know, one of the things that we're trying to help you learn how to do throughout this entire course, but certainly throughout this project, is uh, do stuff on your own, right? Because there's a big, exciting, cool world of things that you can create and build with some of the skills you've been learning. But, you know, there's, there's no equivalent sometimes of the support that we're able to provide in a course. You know, you, you, know, you are uh, put in a position where it's very, very helpful to be able to figure things out on your own. Um, and so we're gonna give you a little practice doing that right now. Now, what do we need to do? So in the lesson, there is a specification for what needs to happen here, but let's talk about it a little bit and we'll go through some of the pieces together. Um, so here's what needs to happen. So we, at this point, we've set up a listener for our cancel button. And what happens when the cancel button is clicked is that we go back to the main menu. How do we achieve that? We created this intent. We call start activity. This is the same way we got to the add place activity, but we're using this to get back to the main activity. And we set a few flags here on the intent that allow us to prevent the, uh, the add place activity from sort of being something that we can return to using the back button, which is not what a user would expect. Okay, so there is another button. There are two other uh, things on this layout that we need to work with. One is the description. The description is a text box. This is an edit text component, and it has ways to allow you to get the contents. You are going to need to use them. The other one is this save button. So the save button is another button. It is essentially the exactly same thing as the cancel button, except it's a different button. So you will find it in a similar way, and you will attach a listener to it in a similar way. That listener, when clicked, needs to do a few things. It needs to take the description from the description component, from the text component that's part of this layout. So another way to think about this is we're building a request. We're building a place that we're then going to pass to our client, right? Which knows how to post a place to the server. So what do we need to define a favorite place? We need the location. That's one piece that you're going to have to figure out how to get at. That location was passed to this activity. You need to figure out how to extract it. So you need to pass the location. You need to pass the ID. We defined the ID on our favorite places application, so you really just need to grab that, right? It's just hard coded. The name is up to you to put in whatever you want. It should not be blank, but you can put in Mickey Mouse. You can put in Gracie, the name of my dog. It's not something that we are going to check. So we need a position, which is passed to this activity. Uh, so you need to extract that from the intent that was used to launch the activity, and you can figure out how to do that. You need the description, which is entered into the text box that's part of this activity, and you can figure out how to extract that. You need the ID, which is hard-coded in the Favorite Places application, and you need a name, which you can put in anything you want. So once you have all those things, you create a place, you pass it to Post Favorite Places, and when Post Favorite Places completes, you go back to the main activity. So that's how this works. So when the user clicks Save, you should collect all these pieces of information, you should create a new place, post it using your client.postFavoritePlace method. When that returns, you go back to the main activity. And at that point, if all goes according to plan and everything else is working, your client has transmitted information to the server, your server has updated its database of favorite places, and you will actually be able to see this working and you can actually use, you can test this using the emulator. And I would suggest that you do it that way. You click on a spot in the emulator, you can even use the default text if you want, hit save. When you get back to the main activity, to the main Matthew, you should see right where you clicked a new favorite place. If that works, you should probably be able to pass the test suites. Now, you can have a little bit of fun with this if you want to, and there's some suggestions about how to improve you know, this a little bit in the write-up. Not all of those things are tested by our test suite, that's okay, right? We left you a little bit of latitude here if you want to do things like, if the user puts in a blank description, not allow them to submit that, right? Or things like that. Do a little bit of validation on the inputs and there's a few other suggestions. So, you know, feel free to do that. Feel free to freelance a little bit here. That's cool. Um, I would suggest you pass the test suites first and then as you're freelancing, making sure that you continue to pass the test suites, it's possible that you might make a change that's actually like a pretty good idea but our test suites don't support, so, so that's okay.
So, so anyway, so that's, that's, the, that's your goal, right? Your goal is when the user clicks the save button, assemble all the information you need to correctly create a new favorite place, create that object, pass it to post favorite place. When that returns, go back to the main activity. So you're very close to being done with MP2. A um, few more steps to wrap up. This is not a lot of code. So if you find yourself writing a ton of code, I would say, please come ask for help on the help site or, or uh, post on the forum because you're probably doing some things you don't need to do. We might be able to help you find a little bit of a simpler solution. Good luck.